reading the title of this post, you wouldn't think this has been a particularly scary story, and you may be right, but this experience terrified me, and I'd like to share it here. I live in a fairly affluent part of South Africa. My dad has made it big in IT, and so we've been blessed with the financial ability to live comfortably. Don't get the wrong idea, he's no Steve Jobs or Alan Turing, he's a businessman with the skills in IT to develop it, and we are comfortable but not crazy rich. My dad isn't famous but our family is known in the local area. My dad put a lot of money into public development, funding a school for the underprivileged and helping to build parks and rec areas. What I'm getting at is that most locals know my dad and they know we have money. I enjoy cycling, and I'd say it's a passion of mine, and I have a pretty valuable and rare bike. For anyone wondering, it's a Breezer Series 2, one of only 25 made. I enjoy spending my time cycling around the local wilderness, and often tackle the same tough mountain trail, in which most of the trail is narrow, steep, and gravel and sand strewn, making it very difficult to tackle, and damn near impossible for any untrained rookie. On the left is the cliff walls, the path wrapped around the cliff in a twirl up to the top, and on the right is a sheer cliff face that the higher you climb, the deadlier it becomes. Although quite a daunting trail, I've tackled it plenty of times and was comfortable with it. However, one day, when I was roughly halfway up, I came across a man on the floor, leaning against a rock, holding the top of his leg. He looked hurt and exhausted and wasn't wearing cycling gear. He was wearing a khaki jacket and light sandy chinos. A bike was resting next to him. A proper rusty mess that could have snapped if it bounced off a large enough stone in the trail. It was clear to me this gentleman had underestimated the trail and was ill-equipped and had now fallen and injured himself. I pulled in slightly on my bike and hopped off, straddling it next to me. Hey pal, need any help? I asked, trying to sound more concerned than patronising. He looked ill-equipped, but anyone can fall off their bike. Ah, yeah, I came off here, twisted my leg pretty bad, and I think I hit my head. He squeezed out between gritted teeth and gasps of pain whilst rubbing the back of his head. I rested my bike against a rock at a 90 degree angle to him and went over to see if he was okay, crouching in front of him. It was weird. I knew it was coming before it even happened. Out of nowhere, an old struggling engine burst into life. I whipped my head round to see an old petrol scooter round in the bend and when I turned back, the injured guy had this cheeky grin. Whack. He sucked me so hard in the back of the head and then I must have passed out. I came to in a dark room with the injured cyclist who looked completely uninjured by the way holding a knife to my face. As I became aware of the situation I was in, I flinched unexpectedly and the cyclist leant closer. Now just don't make any sort of movements and I won't have to hurt you, okay? You're a bastard, I retorted. Please, it's nothing personal. He grinned again. I soon realised that the room was actually a van as I could hear an engine and feel bumps in the road. I was completely bricking it. I didn't see much of a chance of me actually surviving this ordeal. Soon, the van stopped and I heard a door open and then slam. All of a sudden, the back doors of this van swung open, spilling hot sunlight into the back. The man who opened the door craned his neck and looked at the cyclist. Hey, I need to speak to you for a moment. The cyclist looked at me menacingly and closed the van door behind me. I heard the two men arguing about something. It was how much they were going to ransom me for and where they wanted the drop-off point to be. This continued for a few minutes until the cyclist, in an angry tone, said, Come here, I want to show you something. Come, look. I heard the two men's voices fade out as they walked further away. No more than a minute could have passed when I heard a door open and close again. It must have been the third assailant. The back doors of the van opened again, and another guy climbed in. He was young, no older than 18, but 
may have been even younger than he looked way out of his depth. He then pulled out a knife and came over to me. I began to wince as he closed in on me and I closed my eyes, waiting to feel a sharp slash on my skin. It never came. Instead, I felt the bounds tying me up loosen and the guy looked at me. Get out of here. Now. I was confused but knew I had no time to think. He passed me the bindings. Take them with you. I grabbed them, jumped out of the back of the van and bolted into the bushes in the opposite direction the two voices had gone. The guy who set me free waited a moment and then jumped out the back of the van onto the dirt road and screamed loudly. He was going to act as if I got the drop on him. He didn't look at me but I nodded with respect and then just kept running. I was running for about an hour until I reached a road where I flagged down a car. It was two hours from my hometown and this lovely gentleman took me to the nearest police station. My father came to pick me up and honestly, we were all just happy I was safe. Obviously I reported as many details to the police as I could remember but stuff like this isn't entirely uncommon in South Africa and there was no evidence or leads but at least it was now on their radar. The only thing they got was my bicycle, which is worth a fair bit to the right buyer. However, something tells me they'll just sell it for scrap or something. I still go back to the trail this all happened on, but not as much as I used to, and I always speed up whenever I see others on the trail. Hey guys, Brothers Jackson here. Um, short story this week. Um, I've had this one lying around for a while to be honest um, I just never got around to narrating it I was going to put it in another video but as you all know a lot of the content I do is like specific to um, paranormal stories and I tend to do like a specific theme as well rather than just like a random assortment of stories not many kidnapping stories tend to come up so I just sort of narrated it on its own I still hope you enjoyed it. Look out for the next video. Like, comment and subscribe for more. And thank you for supporting me. Peace out guys.